Hello and welcome back to my Gravity Falls toy box. In honor of Star Wars Day tomorrow, May the 4th, I've got Chewbacca with me. <laughs> he looks a little like Bigfoot, doesn't he? That would be someone you would expect to run into in Gravity Falls. Anyway, we're going to start building some of the major locations in Gravity Falls today, beginning with the Mystery Shack. Here are some screenshots of this location from the TV show. This one is from the opening credits. You can see the building sits in a clearing surrounded by tall trees. There's also a totem pole, but interestingly, <laughs> the location of this pole is different depending on which episode you're watching. In this shot, it's behind the building on the right, but in this early shot from the first episode, it's on the left, which is strange. And a short time later in the same episode, it shows the totem pole in the foreground out in front of the building near the entrance to the clearing. So in the same episode, you see it in three different locations. It seems to move around. I guess that's another one of Gravity Falls' big mysteries, though. But most of the time, the totem pole is behind the building on the right, like you see in this shot from episode 5. So this is the location that I chose for the totem pole in my toy box. And once again, here is the map that I'm using that shows where all of the locations reside in Gravity Falls. The Mystery Shack is at location number one in the upper left corner. You can see there's a path that turns off from the main road, crosses over the river, and winds back through the woods to the clearing where the building sits. So this is what I'm going to build today. So as we get started, let's uh, head on out this way, and we'll come into spark mode first of all. And I want to notice and point out where the... Uh, where the bridge is going to go. So here we have one block for the river and a second one that leads us up to the edge of this terrain seam right here. And then we're going to go one, two more blocks. And so what we're going to do is straddle this seam. All right. So the seam after the fourth block. And I'm going to use the long pirate dock. You'll need the Pirates of the Caribbean playset for this. This just looks like a nice bridge piece. And we're going to put this down and rotate it so it's not quite so repetitive. And just lay out a, bit, a bridge across the road. And then we're going to make it too wide. It's a little bit wider than a racetrack piece, but one just wasn't quite enough to me. Um, since I stink at driving anyway, <laughs> having the extra width for going across that bridge really helps. So that's our bridge that goes across the river. And now we need to kind of block in the path that leads from the road back to the mystery shack. And to do that, we'll use some of the... Uh, plant pieces here and I'll begin with this fantasy terrain strip 2. This is the one that I want to use and I'm going to line this up like this and I'll style all of these a little bit later but I think uh, just to get this down, well actually I think I think we're okay to style these now. I don't think it increases the bounding boxes on these. If it does, we'll go ahead and change them. So let's go ahead and set the Gravity Falls fur edging on that one. And on that one. And I'll go ahead and set it to be my theme. There. Okay. And then let's just go ahead and fill in a few pieces here along the, uh, the road and along the path. We'll go ahead and style both of those. So hopefully we won't have to keep doing that. All right. Uh, 
Okay, and then we'll go ahead and put down a couple of more of these. Put one in here about like that, I guess. One in here like this. Yeah, see, that'll butt right up against it, so we're okay. I'm going to put down one of these right about here. And we'll go ahead and style that, although we're not going to use too many of these. This is the uh, fallen log. And while we're right here, let's go ahead and put the uh, sign leading in here to the entrance of Gravity Falls. And you'll find that uh, under Building Sets Group 7, assuming you've unlocked all of these pieces or purchased them from the toy store. And again, you need the uh, Toy Box Speedway game to unlock these. Most of these. Some of them you can purchase, I believe, from the toy store. All right, we'll go ahead and put down a few more plants along here just to kind of finish this off. I'm lining the edge of this up with that terrain block. So we'll put down one. Oops, I was trying to flick it. Two. And it's not going to let me do it. Three. And we'll put in a kind of a little section of woods right up here like that just for something interesting. So that just kind of looks like a nice scenic overlook there since you got the waterfall. So I like that. All right, we'll fill in some more trees later, but uh, for right now I want to get back to outlining the path. And I may put in a few along the way. <laughs> Creator's prerogative. I can change my mind as I go if I want. Drop that in. All right, let's head across the road. So over here, we'll start with this piece, and I want to—I don't want to line it up with the edge of the road like that because I want the road to kind of curve a little bit. And it'd be nice to have a gentler curve, but uh, that's about the best we got. But I'm trying to make it look like it kind of winds back into the woods here. That's my goal. And uh, let's see. Sorry about this. Just trying to grab my screenshot here. All right. Put this one up like that. We're going to put another one here like this. Uh, actually, this one. Kind of line it up against that, like so. And I'm mainly focusing again on outlining the path here, heading back to the Mystery Shack and the clearing around the Mystery Shack. So probably the best thing to do with this would just be to continue going around the clearing in a clockwise direction. And this one, nope, we're going to use this one. So I'm going to line this up with that piece there, like that. Okay. I'll put this one in like this. We'll put some additional trees in here a little bit later. Sorry for the slight pauses. I'm kind of scrolling my screenshots here as I speak, <laughs> trying to make sure I got the uh, screenshots going. So I've kind of taken a bunch of them around the perimeter of this just so I could uh, recreate this for you. This one will set to be Gravity Falls Grove. And again, I'll set that to be my theme. And because we got some gaps in here between these pieces, we'll fit in some other pieces behind that. And since I'm talking about it, let's just go ahead and do that now. So we're going to kind of line this up like so. 
flip it around. There's a lot of tall trees around the mystery shack, so I want to be sure to go ahead and incorporate that into my build here. Just so we have lots of tall trees around it. And we can put one back here as well. So if we look, for example, I believe it's the tall tree. This one's going to be another tall tree that you can actually drive through. And just because I want to kind of hide that little tunnel in the tree, we'll go ahead and pick it up and rotate it. So it's not quite as visible. That way it just looks like a tall tree. Oh, I got to upgrade Chewy. Nice. I haven't done that yet. All right, put this up here next to that piece. And I don't think I can go any closer. So go like that. And I think actually I had it. Let me spin this back around so I can see what I'm working with. Yeah, I had it like that. So just to make sure I got that right. This one <laughs> causes a problem. So this is the the one we'll have to style at the end. I don't know why some of them do this and others don't. So I'm going to set that back to be my theme. And we'll style all these at the end when we're done. So we get that lined up with that piece. That looks good. And then we'll come back and put this one in here. And that should sit right up against the edge of the terrain. Just like that. Okay, I put another one of these here. One of these here. All right. And then we come around the corner. This isn't all that exciting, I know, but I'm not going to make you watch me put in all of these trees, but I am going to put in the ones that kind of determine where the uh, outline is for the clearing here, because this is kind of important. You want to make sure you have enough space for the Ferris wheel and all of the rides that we're going to put in. Just want to make sure we have room for all of that. And that kind of plugs that gap a little bit, which is good. This one there behind that. And uh, next one over. Now this one I'm going to put it back just a little bit. You don't want to necessarily make this so repetitive that uh, that um, it's too predictable because it's supposed to look kind of natural. So I want to make sure I do that. So once again, we'll kind of put that one back a little bit. And this one we're going to line up with that block right there. All right, so here's our path coming into the Mystery Shack clearing. So it comes through here, across the bridge, around the path. And then the building sits here, and we got a clearing over here for all of the fair activities. And it looks kind of big, but uh, can't really be helped. Um, <laughs> you 
in order to actually build what you see in the fair from the TV show, you kind of have to have all that space. So there's not really any way around that. All right, so now for the mystery shack itself. And let me pull up that building shot. Here we go. Okay, so once again, you're going to find that up under building, set, building sets group seven, the mystery shack. And we're going to put this in here as close as we can get to that edge without bumping into those trees. And we want uh, mystery shack sign to be facing this way towards the road. And actually that means we can back this up just a little bit further. And I want to bring this over about like that. So kind of look at where that corner is that's on the front right now on our view. That's just sticking out past those trees. So that's where we're dropping the mystery shack. And I guess the exact placement of that doesn't really matter, except you kind of want to see that as you come through, as you're driving in. So if you put it too far to the right, you're not going to see the Mystery Shack sign at the top. All right, and then the totem pole will sit back here. And we're going to drop this right out here, even with the front edge of those trees on either side. So just like that. So there's our totem pole. And then we have a well. And you couldn't see this in any of the screenshots that I had. But there are some shots where you can see it. And you can find a well up under the gameplay toys drawer if you have the Brave Forest Siege game. And it's actually a a interactive toy, which is good because I want to use it for uh, my Double Dipper tribute. So here's our well, and it sits back up in here, kind of like this, about like that. And you can make it go a little bit further this way if you want. So there we go, there's our well. Okay, and uh, I think at this point I'm going to go offline and add a few more trees just to fill this area in, and then I'll be back and I'll just kind of show you my placement for these. I'm not going to go crazy with the trees at this point, but I just want to fill in this corner just so that uh, it's finished. So I'm going to do that, and then I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and I filled in the trees and uh, I hadn't put too much down, but it took a while to jump between my screenshots and figure it out. That's why I didn't want to do this live for you. The first thing I want to point out is the two trees that I had placed down here, which were basically two of these back to back. I took out and put down this fantasy terrain strip one and uh, I misread my screenshot, so I wanted you to see that. And I'll go ahead and style that. And then I stuck one of these uh, corner pieces in here behind it, as well as this piece. Let me pick that up so you can see where that is. That's Fantasy Terrain 2. And I put the straight edge up next to the edge for that. And so when we style this, you end up with another variant of the tall tree with a little sign that points the way to the Mystery Shack. And uh, put another one of those uh, Fantasy Terrain Strip one, one here, as well as the big tree. On the other side of the river, behind this piece, I flipped it around and put a second piece down, followed by the other corner piece, and then went back to this piece again and put two of them back to back. And then a fantasy terrain strip one and another of the big corners here with another one of these pieces. So I'll go ahead and style that again. That points the way to the mystery shack. 
And I also added a couple of these uh, small trees in here. And when you style these, you get a single pine. And like that. And as far as the other trees here, I haven't added too much. Um, I added, uh, there's two single trees that I just styled. And then I added another one of these lined up like so. And flipped it around and put another one down and then another big tree. So it's not too much. Um, and again, the exact placement of those doesn't really matter. I'm just filling it in, but I don't want to fill it in completely because we don't have memory enough for that. Plus, you want to give the player room to be able to run in through here, through the trees, and not get bogged down. So, uh, that way they have some, some places to run and explore. Oh, and on this side, I moved this tree. This was lined up with the right edge of this piece, and I slid it over about halfway and slid this one halfway, which kind of filled the gap in here that was between this piece and this piece. So now we have some trees behind there, and then I put another one of those uh, single tree pieces in there. But there we go. That's the mystery shack and the clearing for it and the road leading up to it. Well, I think this is a good stopping point for today. Next time we'll build the town and add most of the remaining buildings. Until then, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series so far, or at least finding it helpful. As I mentioned in episode two, it isn't easy figuring out how to build this setting and where to place all the buildings with respect to each other. So hopefully this helps you out. Even if you choose to build your own games and adventures instead of mine, at least you'll be able to recreate this setting. Before you go, please hit the like button and leave a comment to let me know what you think of my toy box build so far. And subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my toy box projects. That's all for me today. See you next time.